Six exercises that science proves force the chest to grow. The chest is one of the most important muscles for a respectable male physique. Together with the abdomen, it makes up almost the entire front part of your shape. The problem is that even after years of training, most people fail to develop this muscle well. And it's not for lack of effort. The three main mistakes are some basic errors during execution, the wrong choice of exercises, doing movements that always work the same portion and stimulate the same fiber orientation, and finally, not having good periodization. The result? An unbalanced, weak, and aesthetically frustrating chest. That's why today, you'll see the only six exercises proven by science to build a complete and impressive chest, and more importantly, how to fit these exercises into your weekly routine intelligently. Before we start, please tell us through the comments your name and the city where you're watching our content from. We'd love to know. Exercise number one, incline Smith machine press. We're starting with an upper chest exercise because the clavicular portion is without a doubt the most difficult to develop. The anatomical reason for this lies in the orientation of the muscle fibers and the naturally lower participation of this segment in daily activities. While the lower and middle chest are recruited in practically all pushing movements, the upper region requires a specific angle that will only be adequately stimulated with targeted exercises. To execute correctly, adjust the bench to an angle of 30 to 45 degrees. Higher angles transfer excessive work to the anterior deltoid, diverting the stimulus from the chest. Position yourself on the bench so that the bar descends at nipple line height or slightly above. Maintain scapular retraction throughout the entire movement, pulling the shoulder blades back and down, creating a stable base and protecting the shoulders. Lower the bar in a controlled manner until it almost touches the chest, then push explosively, but without losing control. A common mistake is letting the elbows open too much, forming a 90-degree angle with the body. The ideal is to keep them at approximately 45 degrees to maximize chest recruitment and minimize joint stress. If you plan to use progressive load to go to muscular failure, always set the safety catch. It seems obvious, but many people forget and end up in dangerous situations when they can't complete the last repetition. The catch should be positioned a few inches below the lowest point of the movement, allowing complete range of motion, but preventing the bar from trapping you if you fail. I recommend three sets progressing in load from six to 10 repetitions. This repetition range is ideal for hypertrophy and strength development in the upper chest. Exercise number two, low cable crossover. This is our second and final exercise focused on the upper chest, and that's why it's strategically positioned right after the incline press. The logic here is simple. You've already pre-fatigued the upper fibers of the chest with the compound movement. Now you're going to isolate them even more with an exercise that allows a different and complementary movement pattern. Position yourself in the center of the crossover with the pulleys adjusted to the lowest position possible. Grab the handles and take a step forward to create tension in the cables. Lean the torso slightly forward, about 15 to 20 degrees. This will facilitate correct recruitment. The movement consists of bringing the hands from bottom to top, crossing in front of the body at upper chest height. The secret lies in the adduction you do together with the upward movement. Instead of just raising your arms, you need to actively close the movement as if you were hugging someone, but bringing your hands upward. This intentional adduction recruits much more of the upper chest and decreases the participation of the anterior deltoid. Before we continue, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Having constant access to science-based information is what will make you progress healthily in the long term in the world of bodybuilding. A mistake I see constantly is using excessive load. This forces the person to compensate with the anterior deltoid and even with the trapezius, completely deviating from the exercise's objective. It's natural to decrease the load on this movement compared to the incline press. If you're doing incline press with 176 pounds, you might only use 33 or 44 pounds on each side in the crossover. Focus on technique, on the feeling of contraction, on the peak tension when the hands meet at the top. I recommend three sets of eight to 12 repetitions controlling both the upward and downward movement. Exercise number three, high cable crossover. We placed our first exercise for the lower chest right after the low cable crossover because we know that, depending on what time you train, it's not easy to access the crossover. Crowded gyms, occupied equipment, you know the story. 
That's why, taking advantage of the fact that you just used the pulleys at the bottom, just adjust them upward and continue your training without having to wait or change areas. Adjust the pulleys to the highest available position and grab the handles. Maintain an upright posture or with a slight forward lean, about 10 to 15 degrees. The movement consists of bringing the hands from top to bottom, crossing in front of the body at upper abdomen height. Unlike the crossover for upper chest, here the force vector is pulling from above, which aligns perfectly with the orientation of the lower chest fibers that start from the sternum and descend toward the humerus. Keep the elbows slightly flexed throughout the entire movement, about 10 to 20 degrees of flexion. Completely locking the elbows can generate unnecessary stress on the joint while flexing too much, transforms the exercise into a triceps extension. The key is to maintain this constant angle and use only the shoulder joint to execute the movement. Contract intensely at the final point. When the hands cross, hold for one second and then return in a controlled manner. I recommend three sets of eight to 12 repetitions, always prioritizing muscle sensation over the load used. Exercise number four, flat dumbbell press. We chose dumbbells here because we already used the bar in the incline press, and so we're going to differentiate the stimulus a bit by using dumbbells. The advantages are significant. First, you get a much greater range of motion. With the bar, the movement ends when it touches your chest, but with dumbbells, you can descend beyond this point, creating additional stretch in the chest fibers. Second, total safety to progress in load. If you fail on a repetition with dumbbells, you simply drop them to the sides. With a bar, you can get trapped under the weight. Third, working each side with exactly the same force. The flat dumbbell press mainly hits the medial portion of the chest, that central region that creates the separation line between the two sides of the chest. Lie down on a flat bench, plant your feet firmly on the floor to create a stable base. Hold the dumbbells with palms facing forward and position them at chest height. Maintain scapular retraction. This is non-negotiable. Push the dumbbells upward in a slightly diagonal trajectory, as if you were drawing an inverted triangle in the air. At the top of the movement, the dumbbells should be almost touching, directly above the nipple line. Descend in a controlled manner, allowing the elbows to descend slightly below the bench line. This is the differential of dumbbells, this extra stretch. Feel the chest stretch, but don't force to the point of feeling discomfort in the shoulders. A common mistake is excessively rotating the wrists during the movement. Keep the wrists neutral or with a slight natural rotation, but avoid abrupt twists that can force the joints. I recommend three sets of six to eight repetitions. This lower range allows you to use heavier loads, favoring the development of strength along with hypertrophy. Exercise number five, parallel bar dips. This is the second exercise for the lower chest of the workout, and it's an excellent choice to finish the work on this muscle portion. Parallel bar dips are a compound movement that allows you to use body weight as resistance and with the correct technique can generate brutal stimulus for the lower chest region. To execute dips with focus on the chest and not the triceps, you need to adjust your posture. First, use parallel bars with a distance of at least 24 inches between them. Bars that are too close force the elbows to stay close to the body, diverting the work to the triceps. Second, Lean the torso forward about 30 to 40 degrees. This inclination is what transfers the tension to the lower chest. Maintain this inclination throughout the entire movement. Don't let the body return to vertical. Third, allow the elbows to open slightly to the sides, forming an angle of approximately 45 degrees with the torso. Descend in a controlled manner until the elbows form an angle of about 90 degrees or until you feel a comfortable stretch in the chest. Don't descend too much if you feel discomfort in the shoulders. This is a delicate joint and forcing too much can cause rotator cuff injuries. Push upward explosively but controlled, concentrating on using the chest to propel the movement. At the top, don't completely lock the elbows, maintain a slight flexion to keep constant tension in the muscle. If the exercise with body weight is too easy, you can add load using a dip belt with weight plates. If it's too difficult, use an assisted machine or elastic bands to reduce the load. I recommend three sets of eight to 12 repetitions, going to failure only on the last set. This ensures that you maintain technical quality in the first sets while still challenging the muscle to the maximum in the final set. Exercise number six, chest fly machine. We use the machine here because the dumbbell fly is highly injurious, mainly to the elbows. 
When you execute the fly with dumbbells, all the weight is hanging on your extended arms, creating enormous torque on the elbow and shoulder joints. Over time, this repetitive stress can lead to tendonitis, bursitis, and other injuries that will take you out of training for weeks or months. The machine, on the other hand, maintains a much safer and more comfortable trajectory, with the weight distributed so that the joints don't suffer excessive overload. Adjust the machine's seat so that the handles are at the height of your chest. Sit with your back firmly supported and feet planted on the floor. Grab the handles and position the elbows in a slight flexion, about 10 to 15 degrees. This angle should be maintained throughout the entire movement. Open your arms in a controlled manner, feeling the chest gradually stretch. Go to the point where you feel an intense but comfortable stretch, without joint pain. Then, bring the handles back to the front, strongly contracting the chest and focusing on bringing the hands together as if you were hugging a large object. A common mistake is using momentum, swinging the body to help with the movement. This not only decreases muscle stimulus but also increases the risk of injuries. Keep the body stable, using only the chest's strength to control the movement. Another mistake is breathing incorrectly. Inhale when opening the arms and exhale when closing them, maintaining a constant breathing pattern that helps stabilize the core. I recommend three sets of eight to 12 movements, going to failure only on the last set. In the first two, leave one or two repetitions in reserve to guarantee technical quality. Now that you know the six exercises, let's talk about organization. You have two options to fit this workout into your weekly routine. The first, although I don't strongly recommend it, is to do all six exercises on the same day and execute this workout once a week. The problem is that the last exercises will inevitably have lower quality than the first three. You'll be fatigued, performance will drop, and muscle stimulus will be compromised. The second option, which I use and recommend, is to divide these six exercises into two different days in the week, giving 48 to 72 hours of rest between sessions. You can train chest on Monday and Thursday, Tuesday and Friday, or any combination that works for your schedule. The division can be four exercises on one day and two on the other, or three exercises on each day. Personally, I prefer three and three as it better balances volume and intensity. Even with the best exercises, execution errors can completely sabotage your results. Error number one, using more triceps than chest. It's common to see people executing bench press, push-ups, or even the pec deck, and then complaining that they feel it more in the triceps than in the chest itself. This problem in most cases is linked to how the movement is executed and the positioning of the elbows. When the angle of the arms is too narrow in relation to the torso, the triceps end up dominating the exercise while the chest assumes a secondary role. To adjust this, it's necessary to find a positioning where the elbows form an angle of approximately 45 degrees in relation to the body. If you're doing flat barbell bench press, for example, avoid placing your hands too close as this would transform the movement almost into a close grip bench press, which ends up prioritizing the triceps. On the other hand, don't open the elbows too much perpendicular to the body, as this can overload the shoulders and create a significant risk of injury. Another crucial factor is the load used. If you're using very heavy loads that you can't adequately control, your body tends to look for biomechanical shortcuts, and a common shortcut is to transfer most of the effort to the triceps. In this case, reducing the load and prioritizing the feeling of chest contraction can be much more beneficial for hypertrophy. Remember, the goal is not to lift the heaviest weight possible, but rather to create maximum mechanical tension in the target muscle. If you're doing eight repetitions with 132 pounds but feeling everything in the triceps, it's better to do 12 repetitions with 88 pounds and really feel the chest working. Error number two, low range of motion. The relentless pursuit of heavy loads causes many people to sacrifice their range of motion a crucial factor for generating tension effectively and stimulating hypertrophy. In the bench press, for example, some athletes shorten the descent just to be able to add more plates, thus failing to work the entire contraction amplitude of the chest. In fly movements, it's common to see quick repetitions without lowering the dumbbell to a position that really stretches the muscle. When we talk about hypertrophy, range of motion is often more important than the load used in isolation. A complete movement makes the chest stretch and contract fully, increasing micro-tears in muscle fibers 
which positively induces the body to repair and hypertrophy them during the recovery period. If you only go halfway, you lose a large part of this stimulus. It's like scoring an own goal in terms of muscle gain. Using excessively heavy loads not only reduces range of motion, but also drastically increases the risk of joint and muscle injuries. The shoulder is a particularly sensitive area, and forcing the movement with a weight you can't fully control can result in inflammation, tendonitis, or even rotator cuff problems, a set of four small muscles that stabilize the shoulder joint. A rotator cuff injury can keep you away from training for months. Error number three, not controlling the eccentric. Every exercise has two main phases, the concentric when you push the weight and the eccentric when you return to the initial position. It's natural to pay more attention to the concentric phase as it seems to be the part of the real effort, but many neglect the descent, simply letting the weight drop. By doing this, you lose one of the most valuable opportunities to create controlled micro tears in muscle fibers. This controlled stretching promotes microscopic ruptures that the body repairs during supercompensation, resulting in increased size and strength. If you let the weight drop, you not only lose this significant advantage, but also put more stress on the joints, opening the door to shoulder, elbow, and wrist injuries. To correct this, simply control the descent with a slightly longer duration than the ascent, for example, about two or three seconds. In the bench press, lower the weight, feeling the progressive stretch in the chest, and keep your scapula firm without letting the shoulder advance forward. In flies, execute the descent smoothly, feeling every inch of the movement and avoiding abrupt oscillations. The temptation to accelerate the descent to save energy for more repetitions is great, but resist. If you enjoyed this and want to discover also a complete back workout based on science so you can finally develop that V-shaped back, we left a video appearing right now on the screen showing better each one of them. Be sure to check it out. Thank you for watching until here and may God bless you my friend.